It's Friday, May the 13th, 2014. I'm Mark Chatterley, and this is episode number 36 of TEN, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning May the 26th, 2014. Let's kick off with some BMW news, as there's quite a fair bit. The British Top Gear show has never been particularly fond of electric cars. It all started with the G Wiz, where they played up its slow top speed and slightly poor construction. Then they moved on to the Tesla Roadster, where they filmed it running out of batteries while on a test track, only it hadn't run out of batteries, it was fine. It was all just to show what happens when batteries run out. Since then, they've reviewed various electric cars with a look at these strange cars attitude, taking the Leaf and iMeve to the only council in the UK that didn't have a charging infrastructure, and then driving them around and around until they ran out of power. So to say they are sceptical about the technology is an understatement. Which is why we were surprised this week when we found out that one of the trio, James May, otherwise known as Captain Slow, has bought a BMW i3. He didn't quite go all electric, opting for the range extended engine, or as he says it's called, pure caradice. I can't really begin to say how much this makes me happy. One of the top gear presenters has bought an electric car. Brilliant. Maybe this is the beginning of the top gear team not being so down on electric cars, and they can be shown in their true light, but then I may be being over optimistic. BMW seems to be having some issues again when it comes to their range extended model. It seems that no one else wants to see it in the same way that they do. From what I can tell, they want the Rex to be seen as a pure electric vehicle that just so happens to carry around some petrol that every now and then kicks in, but really doesn't make it emit anything bad. The way everyone else sees it is that it's a car that has the potential to not be zero emissions. This discrepancy has called BMW some issues. Earlier on this year, BMW had to accept the fact that against what they had been saying all along, the i3 Rex wouldn't be eligible for the unlimited Californian white sticker program. It did later get approved for the limited number green sticker program, albeit just as they ran out. So what's the latest thing they got wrong? Well, in New Jersey, there's no sales tax on zero emissions cars. BMW believed that this would apply to the i3 Rex too. They even sold some cars on this basis, not collecting the sales tax they didn't think was owed. But now it turns out they were wrong. The Rex means this car isn't zero emissions, and all future buyers still need to pay sales tax. And those that have bought it already? Well, no one's really sure. This change means that in New Jersey, adding the Rex option to your i3 doesn't just up the price of the car by $3,000, but it also ups the whole price of the car by 7%. It's a really big mistake to make. There is a lot of confusion at BMW about their electric car i program. In April, we were told that the i3 and i8 were it until they had a better grasp on how much demand there was for plug in vehicles. But this week, we've heard that BMW is already testing their next car in the i range. According to an online report by Automobile Production, an online German news site, BMW boss has confirmed that BMW is currently testing the next car in the i range lineup. It is hinted to be a mid sized van similar to the 2 Series Active Tourer. Could this be the fabled i5? Possibly, but we don't really know. The classic Mini. There aren't many people who don't like it. The small, nippy city car is an icon of British design that is recognised around the world. So what happens when its designers team up with Italian company touring Superlegra? Something beautiful, that's what. I mean, just look at it! There are no further details available about the drivetrain of the car other than it's electrically powered, so we can't give you any idea of the top speed, charging speed, 0-62 time or so on. But when a car looks this stunning, who really needs any of that? The coolest feature in this car, in my opinion anyway, the back lights of the car are made by Union Jack, split in two down the middle and lit up with LEDs. It looks amazing. Some VW news for you now. It was confirmed this week that the 8th generation of the Volkswagen Passat will be offered as a plug-in hybrid, adding to VW's rapidly growing plug-in range. The plug-in hybrid version that aims to allow drivers up to about 31 miles of electric range and a combined electric and standard fuel range of over 600 miles. It will come with a petrol direct injection turbocharged engine coupled to an 80 kilowatt electric motor. This is connected to a 9.9 kilowatt hour liquid cooled lithium ion battery. It will have a top speed of over 130 miles per hour, that's over 210 kilometers per hour if you use that metric, and will do 0 to 60 in less than 8 seconds. Further details are scarce at the moment, but with more expected when the car gets officially launched at the Paris Motor Show in October this year. Here at Transport Evolve, we love to see what kind of adverts companies can come up with to sell their plug-in cars. More often than not, the companies end up with something that just seems to scream they don't quite understand who they're marketing to. 
But it seems that VW has got it right with their first attempt at an advert for the electrically powered Golf. It follows a man as he makes one final trip to the petrol station to say goodbye to it. He gets all teary as he sees all the junk food he's going to miss and even hugs the man behind the counter. It seems the one thing he won't miss, other than the cost of the petrol of course, is the terrible tasting coffee. Because it really is terrible coffee at petrol stations. Anyway, now for some more general news. Many countries provide incentives for purchasing electric or plug-in vehicles over others, from the various government and state level incentives in the US to the UK government grants, all the way to Norway and New Jersey not charging purchase tax on the purchase of a zero emissions vehicle. Hear that BMW? Zero emissions, not almost zero emissions. And now it seems that Iran needs to be added to this list. As reported in an article from the Tehran Times website, Iran has scrapped import tax on all electric and hybrid cars that have less than a 2.5 litre engine. The move is to boost domestic production and make the auto industry competitive, after the administration of former President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad increased car import duties to as much as 90% in 2013. This resulted in, various people believe, the three major car manufacturers to form an effective monopoly between them. Could this lead to more electric and hybrid cars driving around Iran? We can only hope so. Formula E is well and truly on its way. Last week we reported on the cars having been finally delivered to the teams, and this week we can let you know that at the official launch of the race in China, Formula E has signed a deal with CCTV5 for them to show all of the races. As with many other locations, this is a free-to-watch channel, meaning that anyone who wants to be able to watch Formula E will be able to. Other broadcasters worldwide include Fox Sports, covering all of the US and 88 additional territories around the world, Asahi, covering Japan, and ITV, covering the UK. Tickets for pre-registration in China go on sale soon, priced from 488 to 688 renminbi. Are you as excited about the races as we are? I can probably guess you are, because it's going to be awesome! If you live in Europe and own an electric car with a CHAdeMO or CCS rapid charging connector, you will probably have experienced the situation where you are looking around for the closest working charging station while all around you three-phase 32 amp posts taunt you with their simple and working power. You may have wondered why there isn't a small box that you can just plug into the three-phase power on one side and then have it connect and convert it to lovely DC for your car. Well now there is. Designwork, a hardware and software engineering company, has created Chargebox that does just this. Coming in three versions, CHAdeMO, CCS and a combined box with both of them, the Chargebox will allow cars with lower powered onboard charges to gain a charging speed boost from these three phase charging stations. The Chargebox starts at €15,000, that's about £12,000 or $20,000 for the single connector version and goes up to €16,500 for the multi connector version. At this price point, I admit it's unlikely to be a consumer product. However, it is feasible that a company with a fleet of cars made by one or a charging location that just has multiple 22 kilowatt posts could buy one to cater to more cars. And finally, Google's self-driving car is something we've been following for a while now. Well, it looks like Google is now ready to take it to the next step. They are in the process of building 100 prototype cars to see how the technology will work in the real world with real people. To begin with, the cars will have manual controls to allow the occupants to take over driving in case of anything untoward happening. However, the ultimate aim is to have cars without any sort of user control devices. No steering wheel, no pedals, no nothing, just sit down and go. The first cars will also be capped at 25 miles per hour for safety reasons. From the video on the blog, the cars look just amazing. Just jump in and select where you want to go and press the big go button. Could Google be the first company to get a self-driving car to market, or will they be beaten there by one of the many other companies looking into the same technology? We'll just have to wait and see. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us for our talk show where we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Mark Chatterley, and until next time, stay juiced up.